y'all. Tainted Crimson, do I need to have a talk with your cat? I think that's what I'm I'm finding out here. Can y'all hear my speakers? My speakers are buzzing. Strange. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Been a while, Kimmy. Good morning to you. Brad got a fancy pen. I got two fancy pens. Two fancy pens. We're going to open up today. Uh, from the same place. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good evening. You don't hear any buzzing? Good. I'm still hearing it here, but I think it's like minuscule on my side. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to get caught up on a few things this morning here real quick. Uh, while everyone's coming in, good morning, Patrick. Donde esta la biblioteca? Um, so Tainted Crimson, I'll have some coffee for you. Mm. JD Lady, 34 months of subbing. Maybe my single longest subscriber. I need to check. I don't know how to check those things out, but I think that's pretty amazing. 34 months. That's kind of wild. <laughs> when you say those things out loud. Two fancy pens. Well, one fancy pen and then one maybe fancy pen. We're not sure. It's going to be pretty. Well, hopefully. We're, this is the interesting thing about this unboxing. Mark Razback. I turned off the cheerleaders. Thank you for five months of subbing. Six months of subbing, excuse me. Five months in a row. Thank you so much. Or morning. Haha, ha, not sure which side of your journaling guy. Where are you at? I'm on the East Coast, US East Coast. So uh, it's just after 10 a.m. my time. Glad you stopped by. Naomi Lapouche. Good morning. Good morning. I love um, I love these emotes from Spotted Journaling. They're super cool. You're one of the first three channels I subbed to when I found Twitch. Sweet. Journaling guy? Yeah, East Coast. East Coast, Beast Coast. I don't know. There's nothing there's nothing good that goes with the East Coast. That's why our West Coast friends give us so much crap. I mean, West Coast, Best Coast, it just kind of works. East Coast, Least Coast is what they want to say. It's like, like, how do you argue with that? I'm in the state of Georgia. Right now, I'm in the, I'm in the state of caffeine, which we need more of. So I was playing around. East Coast, Neat Coast, eh. Gulf Coast. So Chris, I this you Gulf Coast did not exactly by where you are. I was uh East Coast has the best bagels. I mean, those are facts. Like we can spit those kind of facts all day. Got your Nebula notebook yesterday. Thank you so much. So Chris, I was working at my desk in here and I had on Twitch on the side and there was no one on that I wanted to watch. Like there I couldn't find anything anything that was like super interesting. So I looked in the um Um, like in the directory, and I, forget, I went to just chatting, I think, and I clicked on just chatting, chatting, and there's this dude in the Florida Keys tooling around in a boat, like he's live streaming from the boat and going like fishing in the boat, like I'm not a fisher, fisherman. This, I don't know, this is a pretty fishy shirt though, and I'm like, how is this technically possible? It was like the cleanest, nicest stream. And he's just out, he's like, he's like just sailing out to the mangroves and dropping lines out there. I was like, this is wild. <laughs> so that was, that was my, that's what made you, made me think of when they saw Gulf Coast. Even though I guess the keys wouldn't consider be uh, Gulf, Gulf Coast. Satellite internet. Yeah, that's got to cost a fortune, right? Because the feed was clean. Like it was nice. And then he had his phone strapped to his, his right arm. So he was reading chat from the phone here with like a band and he would look up and he would like reply to chat. And I was just, I was transfixed by this whole thing. <laughs> the 5G chip from his vaccine. That's what it is. That's what it is. But like, I couldn't believe, like I was fascinated just from the technology perspective. It was, it was kind of breaking my head. Because then he when he was moving around, he must have a it must be somehow GoPro related too because he was moving around like it wasn't a fixed camera. So anyway, that's my digression for this morning. That's what I was doing as I was sketching out this. Uh, uh, so there's uh, there's 
lighting is not set up yet. We're, we're still in the same camera state as we were yesterday. We're not going to have the final camera state with lighting, good background, and stuff till Thursday at the earliest. So hang in there on the camera stuff. Um, for Give me another few days till I get the rest of the parts in that I need and get it in its final state. We'll get it white balanced correctly. We'll get it lit correctly. Um, all that kind of stuff. So I was playing around. The lighting does pretty good on the walnut tray that I got from uh, Yoseka. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, so I was playing around with what we were doing yesterday in trying to, um, oh, these have little feet on them, trying to, see this doesn't work well because I don't have a setup to like a lay flat setup yet. So I was just doing this right before stream to what we were talking about yesterday and I did my spacing wrong with the lines like this line that needs to be over here and everything needs to shift to the left. But like this is what I was talking about with like the blocking stuff. Whoops. So, you know, like in these time ranges, eight. I'm basically saying eight, eight thirty. Like I don't have it fifteen minute minute blocks. So like the slashes in between, are like eight, eight thirty. Um, but I'm not gonna draw this every day. Sorry. I as soon as I stick my hand in here, we screw with the focus up, so I know you, you can't read it as well. And I don't have it flat either, so it's not helping. So, like, I know that, like, I have a block here, and then I have shipping for a block here, and then the kids have an orthodontics appointment here, so, like, there should actually be a line here for, like, covers up these blocks, right? So, you know, I went ahead and ordered those William Hanna, um pages just to play with that so it was just a hundred pages for the first thing and then we'll see you know this way like my day will sometimes go a little bit confusing here in the middle and i'll skip shipping because something else has come up right sorry i keep sticking my hand in there and then i'll say oh i'll ship tonight you know like at five o'clock like before dinner but then I'll forget that, well, I've just spent an hour and a half going to the orthodontist and then we got to leave at 5.30 for baseball practice. Then I'll be like, oh my God. So I want to schedule my day out later. And then now I can take this and have all these mini notes over here. Um, you know, like I had a podcast, a friend of the show podcast yesterday. And like, these were my notes going into it, right? So, you know, maybe some of that goes over here. I don't know. That was, that was a kind of a bigger page than what I would normally have. But this will just go back in my planner. And then that's kind of why I want to have this stuff in the William Hanna planner to add in. So I'm just messing around with a few things and, you know, whatnot. So those are my latest thoughts. I'll order the pages that I wanted. I'm excited about the Trigon Pin Show this weekend. Sad I won't see you, Pinatic, but we'll see each other again. Wow, it's this weekend. I can't believe we're in June. Hey, from Scorching, Massachusetts. Well, you would have been right at home this weekend here. Uh, I promise you that, Sarah. It was a nasty day. And we have the storms to prove it. Brad, do you have a set time you start and stop? Um, I will when we're going to um, switch over to like the real page like that real page from the William Hanna has the fixed times in it. Like this was just me kind of just elaborating on what we did yesterday. And then I'll eventually have that page. I'm going to try it in the planner that will have fixed times. Um, and then we'll see how that works. Rocket Chica, three months of summon. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's go. So, I just ordered 100 days. The, the planner sheets that I ordered come in 100 days, and I'll check that format. And then, that's going to give me the time to, one, see if I like that format. Two, hey, Spotted Journal, how you feeling? Glad you made it. Um, that'll give me time to, to discover some different layouts that might be coming out in September timeframe, August, September 
for next year that'll give me time to browse etsy like a, a lot of the custom um a lot of the custom sheet planner layouts that i can use so we're really gonna like upgrade our our planning situation and our journaling situation here like i'm super motivated to get this sorted out right so i'm just trying to get all that sorted out Etsy browsing is a huge time sink. That's why I like following all the people that I do because they'll kind of lead me in the right direction <laughs> instead of, you know, going, okay, I should go look for something and then like, you know, SpongeBob five hours later. Thanks for the love yesterday. Oh, absolutely. Glad to do it. Glad to do it. Um, just thinking about you a lot. I know you have a, you could have a very busy week ahead. So definitely, definitely in our thoughts. Um, every other line is repeated ads Etsy is also not easy to navigate I will say that every time I go in there for something specific and I try to do something else I get frustrated pretty quickly like even if I'll get directly into a shop I'll get confused a lot of times so it's uh it's a little bit weird all right so a couple more things before we get into this unboxing which well, I'll, I'll save that for when I when I talk about it. Two things. Number one is is Sergeant Stretch here yet? Is Phil here yet? I think I'm gonna have to move this. Let's just move this for now. Or move the pens at least. Oh, Tessa talking about the times. Yeah, a definitive start and definitive stop. Yeah, I got to work on the, the stop times, like, so I really need them. So, how can you say you like this notepad? This is that F series, that Midori F. So, it's the glue bound pad with glue binding here, glue binding here and it just makes this terrible ridge in the corner. I like, I, I, I want to like this pad. I know I can pull it off, but I won't want to pull it off. Like I shouldn't have to, that shouldn't be part of my experience. <laughs> so now I'm just mad at it. <laughs> because I like to write at this angle and I hit this ridge over here with my hand, right? I'm not using it like this, right? I'm not writing this way, right? In the open. I'm writing this way a lot of times with this pad. This, this product is stupid. <laughs> it's been a good desk pad. And I, I'm mostly just joking, but like, seriously, why... Why does this have to be a thing? This shouldn't be a thing. Hey, Momo Crafting. Oh, nice. Glad you glad you made it. Yeah, we're going to unbox this stuff in just a second. So, yeah, this is like, don't do this on purpose. Don't do this on purpose. It's like, come on. <laughs> so that's my frustration for the day. Um, second thing. If you're not following the pen addict, the blog, penaddict.com, we have our giveaway pen. Go over to penaddict.com. This morning, the giveaway is up. This is this is something y'all are all going to want to enter. So this is for the Opus 88. How does this box open? Take a paper cutter and cut it off. I, I understand that I can take it off and make it better. I don't want to, or nor should I have to. <laughs> So this is the pen we're giving away this morning. Uh, excuse me, this week on the Pen Addict. Um, it's the Opus 88 Coloro. Really cool pen. So we had an anonymous benefactor send this to me, said, I want to give it away. And I want you to do a giveaway on the blog and I said, yes, please. This is a really great pen. I love these pens. Everyone loves Opus. 
So yeah, pretty fantastic. Um, eyedropper fill. I'm not going to open this up. I'm going to break it. So yeah, someone sent this to me. Said, hey, I've got an extra one. This is my favorite pen. Um, I'm going to order a different nib size. Sorry, I'm going to have to learn this camera. Once we get it, once I get the camera in its final state, I will learn how to present things properly. But yeah, it's just a great all around pen. And these pens are like 90 something dollars, which is a good deal for what this pen mm. is. I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, I love that you use Gleam. Yeah, Gleam is super easy. Like I'm on the free plan and it's really like convenient to use. They make it easier to pick the winner. Um, you know, they, they changed some of their free plan stuff not that long ago, which made it worse, but it's still good enough. Name your camera so you can give it a stern talking to. <laughs> okay. I'll work on that. <laughs> so yeah. Um, We'll uh we'll give that away Saturday. Sorry. Um Yeah, buy so you have them until Friday night to go to panoramic.com, enter. It's just it's just like a click. You just go click the gleam thing. You have to use an email so I can email you if you win. And that's it. I like I make it super easy, so that's that. Alright. Um shall we unbox? The way Gleam checks if I visited Instagram is blocked by Safari's property stuff, so I never get to do that one. I almost think I should just take Insta, in, Instagram. Wow. Wow. All right. Hang on. Instagram because they're let's just call it Instagram's plumbing is getting worse and worse and worse <clears throat> got my stuff from Mr. Cypress yesterday so how many days did it take for yours to show up Namiki Winter Vlad because that's topic number one now I paid for the shipping because it was the only option I think it took two days <laughs> Because you can only, like, the FedEx shipping, yes, yeah, six or less, for, like, from when I ordered to when it hit my door was definitely less than six days. I'm going to, like, four days, five days. I will check it out. It was crazy. But we pay for that privilege, right? We paid $40 in shipping, right? That was the cheapest option um, for, this, for this FedEx shipping, FedEx International. But, man, that stuff just flies here. Let's see what we got here. All right, Clarude, good luck. Did you get freebies with yours, Namiki Winter Vlad? I think that's what's propping this box up. Uh, Mr. Cypress, yeah, Taiwanese pin maker. So we have lots of things in this box here. We'll go, th we'll go through all of it. I just want to get this uh, packaging off my desk. All right. How about doing a time block in your bullet journal? I think like that is definitely at the top of, of my list. Toasty treat, that is a huge question, right? So, like is, the price almost doesn't make sense. And I actually do have some questions about that and we'll, we'll go over that based on an email that I got. Laney Samples Live, thank you for the follow, appreciate you. All right, so this is interesting. First thing in the box, anyone it's like the pad to like lay the pin on like what is this anyone pin bed there you go pin bed it's for the box inside I figure all right we also have 
a three pin case that they included gift with purchase so green leather kind of hard shell oh definitely hard shell so hard shell case slide out oh sorry mouse what did i just click i almost ended the whole stream because i just banged my mouse hey good morning mike pin mattress excuse me So it has this slide out, which really isn't made to go all the way out or else because you would lose the walls over here. So just a nice three pin case. Same, same fancy mattress material here. So very cool. Don't encourage them to raise prices. Well, I, I do have one question. We'll get to, we'll save that for the, for the end. All right, so we have a pin bed, a pin mattress, excuse me and a pin case so far. We have the retail bag. I have had other vendors send me their bags as well, right? So this is like if I was, you know, in the shop, we would I would be checking out with the the Mr. Cypress bag. It's a very fancy bag. It's like cool, thank you, I think. We're going to set that over here. Um we have a is this pad or loose sheets and i see the number 52 on here yeah so this is a 52 gsm tomoe river hey bro i got your package yesterday thank you i'm glad i let you choose for me that's a cool color so uh dr coleman won the birmingham inks he told me to pick i sent him a roted bronze it's sick i think that's a cool color tom ben just put up a restock you see star wars only because my camera is in the only place it can be until I get other parts in for my camera. <laughs> and Cora included a bag like that too. Yeah, it's like um, it's just like what they do, right? From that from the Asian market, um, you get the full shopping experience. Yeah, so it's uh, I guess this is thirty sheets, B five Tamoy River. It has 52G and 68G, so I don't know why both are listed. Or if I would be able to tell here. So it's got 52 and 68 listed on here. So many reasons, <laughs> yeah. There's a 68 blotting paper in here. Is that what this is at the bottom? Let me look at this. Because you know I like my blotting paper. There's no way I'm going to be able to get this back in the packaging. So yeah, I don't know what the difference is here. So we'll have to play with that, around with it. This is a... Um, it's definitely more of a white base Tomoe River, it looks like. That new Egypt pen post that they posted was wild. I haven't checked that out. All right. And then we're not done with the freebies yet, y'all. So just hang on. Let me see if I can get this back in because these are loose sheets, which is cool. The heater just came on. I am hot just thinking about that. Okay. Pass. I told y'all I wasn't going to be able to get that back in. All right. Final freebie. I don't know what we're doing here. Is this their entire catalog? Holy cow. Like, this won't even fit under the camera. So, like, they sent me their... This is, I thought it was just like a magazine or something, you know, the Japanese stationery magazines, but it's like the full Mr. Cypress catalog, it appears. So, like, you're not going to be able to see this on the, on the camera, but you can see why we're looking at their, oh, I like this name, Misty Seagart. <laughs> so, yeah, this is just, um, you know, pen porn magazine. It's kind of crazy. What is happening here? There's like clear stuff in the bottom of these pins. So yeah. 
So just kind of when I said it was really hard to shop on their site, it was because it never ends. Like this is all Mr. Cypress product. All right, we're gonna set all these to the side because then we get this in here, right? So this is, I ordered two pins from them. So this is how they, how they ship them. Um, excellent handmade fountain pens from Mr. Cypress in Taiwan. All right, let me slide this off here. I just can't do the full unboxing under the camera where it's set up. All right, so we have a large interior box here. So I ordered two pens. This is the only box in here right now. It's very fancy though. I will say that, that is a nice box. It is a, that is a legit nice box. So that's what was in here. So we're gonna hope on both of my pins being in there. I'm gonna get the pin mattress back out in case we need it. In case we need it. <laughs> it's gotta be bamboo. This is a it's a very firm box and it's it's dense, right? This is not one of those lightweight um um whatever you call it, the the I, I call them balsa wood, but I don't know what the name of the wood is for the uh little concerned about the quality with all the stuff you get for the price. Man, that's kind of the thing, is like I don't know what to say. Like, we're gonna figure it out. Okay, so it's like a magnet top. That's even nicer. That's cool. That's better than a flip top box. This box is my new favorite. Hey, killer sheep. Yeah, this is not Cypress. This is bamboo. Like you can even, I think you can even see it like here in the, the grain, right? These are, this is cut bamboo. Magnet, so got your magnet corners in the box that's wild very nice i'm impressed with the box all right so i did order two pens okay so they there is no the box is just open which i kind of dig all right so still we're still hidden in here there's the pens are in sleeves and tubes in a box in a cabinet oh does the my pen mattress go there yeah get wrecked pen mattress So then we have the two pins that I bought in these really nice tubes. All right, so let's see what we got. My nails can't handle this pin coffin. <laughs> All right, so your standard basic velvet, you know, little five cent velvet pouch. Cut the elastic strings off and left it in box on the desk. That makes sense. That would be easy to do. That would be a nicer display. Sorry, these were tied up in a knot. So let me get this off of here. All right, so, dang. All right. So this is the Ebonite one I ordered. So this is a fancy ebonite one. And when I was explaining when I ordered on the podcast, they had, you go to this page, I'm gonna move all this stuff out here for now. Let's see if we can get a little better color. Um, you go to this page, right? And there's five colors of this swirly ebonite on there. And you can't pick the color from the drop down. Okay. Oh, threaded cap on the end. Interesting. So basically, I just had to, I ordered it, put the ebonite pin in my cart, and then I had to email them. And I literally said, I want the purple one all the way on the right of the picture. Like, I had to do that follow up. All right. So, and this one has a Bach nib, they just had Bach fittings for this one. My other one has Yovo fittings. So it's your standard box steel nib. 
So the ebonite feels nice. You know, it's it's medium weight. It's not too heavy, not too light. It, it feels like an ebonite pen, right? The clip, clip's pretty good. It's not my favorite design. It stands out a little bit on the ebonite, but it's cool. The grip section looks great, right? Oh, they have an item code on there? Well, they don't make it very easy. They knew exactly what I meant, though. So there you can see the thickness of the barrel. So it looks like it's a good polish, a good finish, right? That color is pretty great, right? Grip section. So I just thought it was a uh, use a light to look in the barrel. I don't know if my I need to get a small like a little pin light for this. Does the cap screw on the back? It looks like it. So we're gonna do that in just a second. if we'll be able to do this properly. Ooh. Yeah. I'll have to get a little pin light for the desk so we can um, check these things out a little better. But yeah, um, pretty neat. Let me put this back on in there. Your G10 has a brass insert. This doesn't feel like it has an insert. Like, it, I would feel it in the balance, I think. So there's the Ebonite. Um, Size-wise, it's very standard. Like, it's not overly big, overly long. Maybe a s slight taper concave in the section for grip. Um, yeah, I accidentally ordered the wrong color. Still happy with it. Facts. That can totally happen. So, yes. So, for posting, it screws on the back, which makes it a giant pin. And I'll, that would drive, number one, I would never post it because that would, length would drive me crazy. But number two, I'll have to see if it's multi-threaded because if I'm writing like this, I don't want the, the clip in that direction. So... I don't know if the back of it's multi-threaded to where I could actually stop it in the right place. Uh, it looks like it is. It does come with a converter, yes. What is that exactly, Micarta? It's essentially like a fiberglass or is Micarta more cotton material. It's basically fiber and glue that's pressed into sheets and then cut. So it's a fibrous material where ebonite is a is a hard rubber. So, and I'll show you the difference. I have a G10 um, in this other the other pens a G10, and I'll show you some of the fiber the way that the way it looks. But pretty great. Someone if someone's on the site, you can check. But I think I paid around 120 US dollars for this. That seems good. Like that seems like completely fair and nice and good. And, um, yeah, like it feels good. Like it feels right. I like it. All right. So that's this one. We'll, we'll go ahead and put this one to sleep for now. It's going to go sleepy time. All right. So that one's going to go sleepy time right now. All right. So this is what I, I didn't know which one I was going to open here first, but this is the pen that I went for the ebonite was an add-on because that's what I do. Um, I'm definitely keeping these tubes for something. I don't know what. All right. This is the one I, this is the one I ordered on purpose. The ebonite was just an accident. It fell into my cart. I don't know how that happened. Just a happy little, happy little accident. So the G10 is a Micarta-like material, but where Micarta is more of a cotton-based, this is more of a fiberglass base, fiber and glue, pressured glue. So this is the one I went for. This is the one that, um, does the G10 have the grinding noise on the threads? I don't know, we're about to find out. So this is the one that Jacob posted on his Instagram that I didn't even bother looking at it because I thought it would be too expensive. 
the ebonite's definitely not 211 that th this one's 211 the ebonite's a little over 100 uh this is mr cypress so oh so it's it's not threaded because they don't use a, a g10 section <laughs> so it's not loud there you go <laughs> does that answer your question <laughs> <laughs> so that answers the question and it looks like it has a like an ebonite sleeve in there mike you can see the sleeve it's either plastic or ebonite um for the threading so they're not cutting the threads on the g10 which is probably a lot of the problem with constructing the g10 pins right um but you also can't see the fibers as much here yeah, that's got to be the worst part of cutting the G10 is these threads. This has a great weight to it. This has a um, oh look at that. That's a good that's a good lineup right there down my hand. That's a good lineup. Um, I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna look at this uh, over here real quick. Yeah, so there is a, um, like Namiki Vlad was saying, there is a brass liner in here to give it some weight, which I like. The ebonite pin didn't have that. I don't know if I'll be able to show y'all. Let's see here. Hmm, I'm trying to... I don't know. You might could you might can catch the edge there. I can't quite get it in in the camera angle. Like I said, I'll get a smaller light for this. But um, hello camera. So from about here back to about here is a brass sleeve which is good like it gives it a good weight like i like it um so you don't see as much I'm trying to get y'all a good picture of the fibers in the material let's see if this will pick up on my camera i don't know it's hard to see the fibers in the material you can see it in person. It basically looks like an underlying pattern, like through the black. Um, but it's hard to pick up on camera. And other G10 pins, like Mike was asking, like what's the threading like? Other G10 pins cut the thread. So this is just, they're cutting the, the barrel and the cap and they're doing like an ebonite insert for the threading if that makes sense. I'll have to bring you, let me go grab one of my other G10 pins and I'll show you the difference. I can show you what the G10 looks like, but um, this, this feels good. Hang on one second. this is my orange g10 pen so this is what mike was asking about a minute ago hey what does it sound like when you open that's a g10 thread 
all right? Because here, you're actually cutting the fiberglass, right? This is the material in these threads. It's not polished like the outside here or the outside here, right? There's no sleeve on this one. So it's got the raw exposed material here. And also, it tends to, like it's a fiber, right? Even if it's fiberglass, you can stain it. So like I've used this pen so much, I've started to stain the section, which is fine. Like I love this pen. But that's the difference between something like this and what, um, this is just fully G10 material. As opposed to the barrel and the cap on the Mr. Cypress pen. Let's see if we can see the fibers in here. The purple one was the mine is the world model. That's exactly right. You can kind of see the fibers in the lighting right here. You can see it's not a smooth acrylic, right? It's got a fiber pattern in there. So that's the difference between something like this and something like this. They just, so the barrel and the cap here are G10. The section is not, which is cool. Like I'm totally down with that because you can't really get a G10 pin to begin with, right? Um, you know, and if they did this extra threading here and here and here, um, that's just gonna escalate the cost. And like, I'm okay with the barrel like this. So that's pretty cool. All right, so this one I'm gonna ink up real quick. Does the cap thread under the section or barrel? Uh, to the section, right? So otherwise it would be something like this. See where the section has the threading on this pin, the camera. So the section has the threading here and here. I mean, sorry, the barrel has the threading here and then the section has the threading here. Oh, I'm sorry, it is on the barrel. There's a sleeve here, sorry, that's my mistake. There's a sleeve right here on the inside, my mistake. My mistake. So again, this one was like $210. So this is the one I went for. Um, but you can, you can totally hear the difference. That's G10 on G10 action. All right, let's ink this one up. <laughs> I knew Mike wanted that. <laughs> um, so I picked out an ink. I'm gonna ink this one up this morning and I'm gonna save the, uh... oh, the purple one's in bed, in the coffin. I'm gonna save the purple one we're gonna do a pen Attic members giveaway for this guy. So we're gonna do that again. Morning Aurelius, it's noted. <clears throat> I need an ASMR microphone. We do not need an ASMR microphone. So Yovo fittings on this one. So I'll eventually switch out the nib on this one. Um, standard fine Yovo nib. I'll go grab one of my, hey, good morning, Lady Dark Lilac. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate you. I'll swap out into like one of my Franklin Christoph like sig nibs or something like that. Um, but today we'll just ink it up. Yeah, the purple one is really great. Y'all wanna see the purple one again in case y'all missed it? This is purple ebonite. There we go. It's wild. It's like cosmic. Oh, do we have, we don't have a member command set up. Yeah, so I do a, um, at penatic.com, I run a members uh, program there. 
and I do I do stuff there. That's not Nico Ebonite, right? I have no clue. I wouldn't know. I don't know if they list on the page where they get their Ebonite from. Am I a member? I don't know. Go to Penatic, uh go to members.penatic.com, I think, or memberful.penatic.com. I mean, if you haven't signed up at penatic.com through the members link, then you're not. It's a $5 a month membership I have over there, Bruce. And I send a newsletter um, every month. And then I do giveaways. I mean, I send a newsletter every week, then I do giveaways every month. So yeah, that's the purple one. It's very, very cool. Feels great. Looks like the Ebonites Ranga uses, yeah. So and this one's fully Ebonite, right? Threaded, everything. There's no inserts like on the G10. All right, I'll put that one back. All right, so I picked out pretty good mat. I'm pretty happy with this, with the matchy matchiness I have going on here, Chad. I'm not gonna lie. So one of my friends sent me this a few years ago. He said, Brad, have you ever tried Mont Blanc Tolstoy? And I said, no, I've never even seen it. I didn't even know it was a blue or a blue-black or anything like that. Um, he said, this is my favorite ink. He found eight bottles of it and sent me one. So he sent me, I, he sent me the tower shot. Of, this was several years ago. He sent me the tower shot on his desk and said, okay, well, I'm going to send you one of these. I'm like, okay, cool. So... That's how I got my Tolstoy. But apparently, very popular color. From, from what I gather. Um, let's see. So I pre... <laughs> I brought in... I knew I was going to ink something, so I just brought something to sit things... Sit stuff in, in case I uh, make a mess. So let's just do this. That was waterproof I would use it all right so I don't know what you can see here yeah you can see how he calls it a blue black I don't think it's a blue black at all I think it's just a nice bright blue the pen I started my week with honestly was the um, was the platinum desk pen this is the one I this is the one I've been using for notes this week I really like this pen all right, so we're just going to we're just going to ink it up here. I actually brought in this paper towel because I thought this was going to be a G10. I didn't know I couldn't remember if this was a G10 section or not. I would not stick my G10 section in the ink bottle, but this I'll stick in the ink bottle. Because again, those G10 parts are fibrous even though they look pretty like pretty well finished here in the cap, right? It looks well finished. It's still fiber, it's still been cut. So I was just going to put the converter in, but this looks just like a regular plastic or ebonite bead section. So there you go. We got a pen addict, uh, an ass TPA one day. It's like, hey, I put my converter in the bottle. Why don't I ever get a full ink? I have too much in the camera now. Why don't I ever get a full fill of ink? And it just happens. Like converters suck right that's just if you do this the first time that's how much you're going to get but i could push i could leave the nib in there push the ink back out and draw it back up again and it would fill it up mostly right i would get like if i left this in and then drew it back up again i would expel more air and i would get probably like seven eighths instead of like you know two thirds or three quarters whatever i have here but like i'm totally fine with this like this doesn't bother me but someone they couldn't figure out they were getting frustrated at this and I was like that's just normal like you can double pump it double twist it and uh, get a fuller fill like if it's really gonna bother you but otherwise that's what you're gonna get so yeah I switch weight ink way too often to care a hundred percent like I have six or seven pens inked up right now I don't need to worry about max capacity in this one right and like I'll be happy to use this up and put a different ink in it so there you go. Alright. So again, this is just a stock Yovo nib. Um, I do get a little obsessive about just kind of cleaning around the... Oh, sorry, I'm not even doing it on camera. 
when the new camera setup is here is here i won't have to reach as far so like if i tend to pull things off it's because i'm sitting back i have to reach way ahead to get into the camera over here so i do try to clean up around the section a bunch but just because i don't want like mysterious ink showing up so well, now that phil's here i'll break out this pad and yell at him real quick I always do the first fill, flip it to get the air out and fill it fully. Yeah. Yeah, it's really not a big deal, but it's just when you're new to it, your expectations are I should have this, but it's just never going to happen. Where is it? So I yelled at Phil this morning before he came on let's see me and this pad are gonna have a bad time Phil no bueno I am not liking this pad as he says as he like religiously uses this pad on his desk so this is the Midori cotton Midori MD cotton this is one of the F size pads um, I like these little Mont Blanc bottles. Sorry, I just want to look at that again. 35 milliliter Ancre Bleu, made in Austria. So the person I interviewed for friend of the show yesterday um, was in Switzerland. So it's almost Austria. Looks like a Diatrimentis bottle. Yeah, like a shorter Diatrimentis bottle. All right, so, I mean, we're not gonna learn anything. Like, oh, it's, it's an amazing writer because this is, I mean, it's a stock Yobo nib. I love stock Yobo nibs, but there's nothing I'm gonna be able, to. the person I interviewed yesterday was not you. Yeah, not this week, Tony, because I have two real people to interview this week. Oh my God, Claire, OMG. So this is a really good match for this pen. I know you can't see it and stuff. We're gonna fix all that this week. But what I wanted to do is get a good feel of the pen in the hand. I wonder if I move that. Brad, what is, my, what is your favorite ink? It's probably a Roshizuku Shinkai. There's probably like a top five that I have that are equally balanced. A Roshizuku Shinkai, Robert Oster Fire on Fire. Um, focus on that camera is very sensitive. Yeah, so I'm gonna have, once I get it into its final position, I'm gonna learn its range and um, operations to, so I'm always so I'm more in the right spot um, instead of just kind of winging it today so yeah so we're gonna we're gonna tweak all this stuff out because I want what I, I want not only just to like show off the pen like hey it's great you can like we can really see this but I want you to be able to see the writing as well which is not uh, focusing fat fast enough so it is a work in progress we are on the path to awesomeness but yeah I mean it this it feels great I like how this pin feels I like the shapes you know I like I, I you know I like the tapered end caps front and back a lot of pressure to have rel manicured hands right now I didn't think about that yeah definitely nail stream hey Toby you wanna come say hi come here Come here. Come here. Toby wants to say hi. Come here. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, big stretches. Toby's had a haircut since his last appearance. Hey, I see you. Do you see your friends? Look. <gasps> here. <laughs> I confused him. Right, buddy? This isn't your happy place, is it? No, you want to get down? All right. 
Thanks for stopping by. So yes, Toby, first new emote. So yeah, like the balance is good. The section is in the right spot. It's pretty straight section. I'm gonna pretend there's a taper there. I can't really feel it, maybe right at the edge. I don't know, so. But yeah, just a good, good stock Yovo nib. Nothing wrong with that, but what it is, is it feels great to use this pen. Like this is a really nice pen. Whoa, that was a big Toby sneeze. Um, this is a pen that you can throw in your pocket or throw in a bag and it's not gonna ding or dent. Like, I, like there's not many pens I would just go around doing that with. <laughs> Y'all heard that, right? He was right on the other side of the desk and just threw down, right? There's very few pens I would be bang around like this. Can you eyedropper that one? I'm, I would never eyedropper a fiber-based pen. And that's what G10 is, unless it had a full sleeve on the inside. It does have a brass insert, but it's not completely solid either. But you're never going to want to eyedropper a Micarta or a G10 pen. And you don't want to eyedrop, yeah, as, aside from the brass. Like, you don't want ink, as much as I just bang this around, right? You don't want ink touching the outside of the pen, really. Even though this looks very nicely finished and it might reject some of it because it'll end up, like, over time, it looks like this, right? You can see how we're starting to get some discoloration here. Um harder to see but there I have like some runners even though this pen has never been dipped in ink I have some runners in the grip section on this pen like you can kind of see it right here so I've actually been using it less um, because the ink will get into these into these fibers excuse me Are you talking to me what do you want He's not looking at me, I don't know what he's doing. Is there any way to clean that? Almost certainly not, right? It's in, you have to think of this as, these are fibers in here. It might be fiberglass, it might be more cotton-based material. So this is what I was showing earlier. This is, these, this is the fibers cut open, right? So like if I got ink on here, this isn't ink, this is what the interior material looks like. Yeah, he stopped answering, he left now, he's gone. If you cut, this is, like if I put ink right here, it would just soak in and spread and feather like on a crazy paper, right? So you can't clean this off because it's in the material, right? This is not exterior to the material. It is literally on a fiber inside the barrel. Does that make sense? That's also why you don't, the Toby did reject, he's gone. That's also why you don't see a lot of companies selling G10 or Micarta. Number one, it's difficult to manufacture G10 more than Micarta. But number two, people can ruin their pens really quickly and may put the blame back on the manufacturer, right? It's very particular material. Um, if I had my Micarta Twisby, I could show you this a lot better. I just don't know exactly where it is. It might take me too long to dig out that pen. This one I knew exactly where it was. I'll bring my Micarta Twisby tomorrow um, and show you what a stained Micarta pen looks like. Would a soak and pen flush uh, clean it out? I think it would probably do more damage. Like I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do that in a million years. Like you just have to accept the fact that your Micarta or G10 pens are going to absorb hand oils, ink, water, and you have to handle them differently, right? So like, 
my I'll show you my Twisby tomorrow. But basically, you never dip this in an ink bottle to fill it. Same with the Twisby. But with the Twisby, what happened with mine is a standard Twisby move. The collar inside here cracked, right? So on the Twisby, this part cracked. And so ink got inside here and started seeping through. So now I have like these big stains on my Twisby. Like it's fine. Like it's like it's totally fine. Like that's part of the deal. Would I prefer it not? Yeah, I would prefer it not. But I still use and enjoy that pen. And like you can also, you probably can't see it on camera, but I see it when I turn it here. Like my fingers have stained like some of the section just from using it, like just finger oils, you know, ink, whatever. So they're not pristine materials. That's why, oh, he's back. He must need to go out, no? He's coming to hang out on the couch now, all right. And now I'm reminded of exactly why I didn't buy the Makarta Twisby. It was the height of their QC train wrecks. Yeah, and I had been really good um, avoiding most of the train wrecks. That was my first one, and it was very damaging to that pen. But I still love that pen. I will bring that in here. Uh, it's a pretty awesome pen. How is Elizabeth feeling today? She has not woken up yet, and I think that's a good sign. So I'm okay with that. So she was doing pretty good last night. Like I felt like she wasn't going to get any worse. So she, yeah, she's doing good. The Micarta is, um, it's a good question. I don't know. We'll see. I'll break it out tomorrow. I still have the original nib in it. So we'll have to see. I want to say it was a Bach though. Maybe it was Yovo. Maybe it's, there was like a, there was like a version one and a version two, right? Of that pen all right let's flip back over here so we're gonna do a giveaway here in just a second um, I wish I could sleep in this late early facts all right let me readjust here so the one thing I wanted to bring up about the mr. Cypress is I had a reader email me said hey I heard you talking about those GTN pens and look at the one I just ordered. And it was from a shop in Italy. Uh, I don't think I have this. Let me see if I have, see if we can pull it up. Um, hang on, let me find this store. But basically, It was one of the exact materials from Mr. Cypress's site. So now I'm just curious, like, where this material is coming from. So this is, oh, it's an Instagram site. So he's sending me one of the wild, like, Micarta materials, or G10 materials. One of the exact materials so i'm wondering what all these where all these materials are coming from because they're great and maybe if someone's mass producing this stuff that's why we can get this pen for 210 dollars jane ray loon thank you for the follow i appreciate you um yeah so it's if we're gonna see more of this on the market and a better price point like, I'm for it. Like, I'm not saying that is a negative. I'm saying maybe we're going to get some interesting materials out there. Yeah, with the G10, with the G10 blank market. You know, uh, oh, look at my pens in the coffin. I wish I wouldn't have said coffin because now that's the only thing I'm going to call this. Oh, uh, aren't they cute? Two coffins. <laughs> crazy fire so yeah so it's probably like i don't know where this is sourced from i don't care it feels good um the price is right so 
Yeah, so like Toasty Treat saying their rod and stuff is laser cut, so I know that it reduces cost and it doesn't bother me because they can achieve some cool designs, but I'm worried about the quality of the Rushi. Like, I think those are fair. That's a fair statement, right? Like the G10, I bought it. Like when I first saw it, this G10, I didn't even go look at it because I know how expensive I expected it in my head. I thought it would be a four, five, six hundred dollar pen. But what it actually is, is a G10 barrel that I don't want to say took a shortcut, but they made a choice not to have a G10 section and threading, which would add, you know, probably 50% to the cost of this pen. So like $210 for this pen material seems right. But if it was, if it didn't have the extra ebonite parts in there for the section and stuff, I'm, it probably would be like a $350, $400 pen. So, like, I'm okay with this. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out through this process. And that's why I wanted to order these pens because the price is good. Um, is the quality good? Are they going to hold up over time? Um, you know, how do they manage the massive inventory that they have how do they answer toasty treats question like a combination of me my question saying look at all this stuff how does this happen and then toasty treat asking well yeah and look at this arushi pen and you're doing all these other things how is the arushi going to hold up over time because i'm really confused at the time frames and these processes right like that should take them a long time to manufacture but they sent me a freaking catalog <laughs> in the mail right so it's a work in progress trying to figure out what is actually happening here so that was the point i wanted to make about these pens and it's also why i wanted to order them i wanted to kind of get a baseline here to see because number one i'm interested in the pen but number two i want to be asked that in a year or two if I still think the same thing, and I don't know unless I, I go in and, and make this purchase to figure out where we're at with a brand like Mr. Cypress, who is really not, I'd be hard pressed to believe that they're just a, a small shop making pens. This is something bigger behind the scenes. And I don't mean that in a nefarious way. I just mean in like we got to figure this out kind of way and i wanted to initiate that with this order so that's what i'm thinking right now as rambly and unclear as that is is let's see what happens it looks cool i'm happy with the order it was fairly priced for the quality of the pens that i've got and I'm going to keep an eye on them and, and see, see what's, see what's going on with that. All right, let's do a giveaway. Um, ooh, probably what's up. Let's put, we'll put the G10 right up here because they're banging around. I am going to give away this Ebonite to Panatic members. So we'll save that there. All right. Try not to throw all this stuff on the floor, but I think I'm just going to have to throw all this stuff on the floor. So I'm going to continue the inky giveaways that we've had. Birmingham was so nice, and Yoseko was so nice to send me all these inks. So we're going to go winner's choice again on an ink giveaway. Still have, hey, Havoc Rose, good morning. Hope you're off to a great day. Um, so we still have these here, which do these colors no justice. <laughs> so we have four Birmingham inks left, uh, and then one Yoseka ink. So we have the Yoseka Origin, the bright green. We have Chrysanthemum. Um, um. Birmingham. I have sampled all these with my glass dip nib pen, but I still want to give some away because it's too many inks. I don't need all these. We have pin cushion moss, which is the permanent ink 
right? This is the everlasting formula that they're using. Yeah, the pinky gray one. <laughs> and then we have antique sepia, which is kind of a greenish brown. It's got really cool shading on there. And then we have the Pennsylvania slate, which is actually a much brighter blue. This is a very absorbent uh, box. This is almost more of a tealy green than it's showing on here. I've trashed this sample paper. But if you want me to show you the sample, if you win and you want me to show you the sample paper, <laughs> I can. <laughs> I should probably chuck this at this point. But uh, we're still looking at things now. So that's three of the colors right there. And then the sepia is this cool color here. So I'm going to let you choose sepia here and then the Yoseka, which is a great green. I'm going to let you choose which color you want because I still, I don't, I'm not going to give all these away, but like I just don't need all these inks, right? So we still have five left. I might keep like two of these, whatever y'all don't pick. So um, they're really, really cool and good colors, but like I was given these inks, I want to give them away to y'all. So let's reset this real quick. And we'll do a giveaway. Let me get my keyboard out. I kind of had that set aside. Hey, Pen Pencils Plus, 12 months of subbing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, let's open this giveaway. Exclamation point raffle. You can get in there. Anyone who would like it. I will send these internationally, although that's a little bit of a risk with ink. We'll see. We'll see. Like I said, I've opened all these. I've tested them no more than my glass dip nib pen in the um, in stream the other day. And then we'll probably, oh, Tubby's ready to play now. And we'll probably do one more giveaway after this. I'll give away some paper here in a sec. Um, tomorrow is normally podcast day. We're going to have, since Mike's off for WWDC this week, doing WWDC things, we're going to have my interview with Ben Walsh posted in tomorrow's feed. That means I'm free tomorrow morning to stream um, instead of podcast. So I, I will be back here tomorrow, 10 a.m., I guess. Or should I do the 1130 stream tomorrow? I didn't think this through completely. I'll probably do 10 a.m. just to keep my schedule a little bit, a little bit tighter. And then, of course, back thursday as well tomorrow i think we'll do uh we have another unboxing <laughs> you already have it marked on your calendar all right 15 seconds left toby just brought his toy in here and wants to play so we're probably not going to go too much longer today but tomorrow we'll do jet pins so we'll see what's in here killing you with 10 a.m you should move you should move to the East Coast, I think. That way the stream time will work better. I just get busy in the afternoons. The afternoons are much harder for me to stream right now. So we'll do uh, Jet Pins unboxing tomorrow. Um, and then Thursday we'll be back again, 10 o'clock. I, uh, I don't know what we'll do then. Maybe my camera will be set up and I could actually do some writing um, and some timing stuff timing stuff planner stuff if i get my camera set up by thursday that's probably what we'll do is thursday might be a camera tweaking stream if i can get all the parts in in time i think they're supposed to come this afternoon i just don't know what time i'm gonna have all right let's give this ink away pick a winner it's the one and only have a gross <laughs> Congrats, Havoc Rose. You're awesome. This is great. Lil what? I know, right? That just means now the pressure's on. You have to decide what color you want, right? So we have your Yoseka green, the origin green with the, the fancy iced ink bottle. 
Oh, you already know? Well, what is it? I won't even have to go through them. I think I know what it is. It might be related to your name somehow. I don't know. Let's see. Pink gray. Exactly right. That's what I thought you'd go. This is the most interesting ink. Chrysanthemum. It's this wild pinky gray. Show everyone what the chrysanthemum ink is supposed to look like. Can we take, should we take a fresh sample or should we just look at the light? This is from a few days ago. It is a really good looking pinky. It's got like green undertones. It's a really cool pinky brown thing. So yeah, it's an awesome color. Like, it's just, it's good. It's super interesting. I think it's very, very interesting color. So yeah, good job, have it crows. You need to email me your shipping address. Um, I might get these out today. Everyone from last week I shipped. I haven't shipped anything this week. Yeah, it's not even green anymore, right? Um, yeah, I think this is one of the more interesting colors that they have going right now. So yeah, just shoot me an email, hello at penayak.com for your shipping address. Let me put your name on this before I forget. <laughs> and then let's give away a notebook or something of that nature. Tomorrow we probably have jet pins giveaways in store. We'll see. I had a feeling you would go for that color. Very good. As tradition, usually the friend of the previous winner wins the giveaway. Nice. Nice. I think that is the uh, tradition. Twitition. Is this a Twitch giveaway or members? We're on Twitch. Like I just gave it away. All right. So let's. Let me see here. Just need to clear some some leg room. All right, let me find um, let me see what paper I've got. I don't know which I don't know which uh, I don't know which shelf I'm gonna go into. Let me see what I have. I don't recall what I have going on here. This is the super size notebook section. Oh, this is nice. Let's do that one. I keep looking, the problem with this giveaway cabinet is I keep looking at it and look, I keep pulling out the stuff. It's like, oh, I should use that. Oh, I should use that. Oh, I should use that. This is product that would probably help me with my <laughs> my planning issues <laughs> that I'm currently having but it's not quite the setup I want because it's a more general setup so it's the right notepads meeting notebook this is a really cool layout right so this is your kind of planner ish layout but it's really really great paper great ink color great build on the notebook it's just like legit awesome. So yeah, from um, my friends at Write Notepads in Baltimore, it's just an outstanding notebook in general. So let's give this away. And after we do this, we're probably gonna wrap it for the day. Um, I have, I actually have a meeting with Mike in about an hour. This is the meeting notebook. Like Cornell ruled, it does not have a bottom box. I can't remember the exact Cornell layout, but it doesn't have a bottom box. But it's got the top sections in the side. So we got a meeting, and we got to do shipping, I'm gonna do lunch, and we got to go to ortho. See, I got my schedule all planned out the rest of the day. All right, let's get this away.
All right, that's a go. Who takes notes in meetings, right? It's also a good review notebook. I've used this notebook several times for uh, pencil reviews. I had a group of pencil reviews that I did in this notebook. It's awesome paper. It's one of my favorite papers. All right, we can. We're almost down to, oh, let me take this out. Oh, I can see if I can get this Mr. Cypress, um, Tomoe River back into the, the packaging. I'll give you all some, some stationary ASMR here. Oh, well now I should keep this paper handy so we can test these inks on the Tomoe River paper. This looks like a good sheet set to keep in here. I just don't know the, the difference between the, why it says 52 and 68. Looks like a great recipe book format. It would be really good for that. So JD lady, you really confused me on, oh, I see. I see what they did. I, we're talking about the blotting paper on the Tomoe River. I see what they did. I figured it out. All right, so there's a circle for 52 and 68 GSM. Check it out. I missed this before. There's a sticker on it. So the sticker's on the 68. So this is the 68 GSM Tamoy River. <laughs> I'm, only I'm only slow on Tuesdays. <laughs> Wow, that was brutal. That was really rough, y'all. I apologize. I was not very smart during this during this time frame. And now I'm still not going to get these back in here. But now I know for sure it's a 68. I would really like y'all to go back in this package. And by y'all, I mean the 30 sheets of Tomoe River. They're my friends. Oh my God. That way I can just pull out one sheet at a time. All right, we did it, Chad. Sorry. It's not even 8.30 on the West Coast, Best Coast. All right, we did it, we're back. All right, All right uh, pick a winner. And then uh, we need to go look and see who we're gonna raid today. Let's take a look. Mafia Geek, 31. Multiple time winner, not Alan Shuko. Congratulations. Congratulations. I think you know the rules. Oh, so I think what I was saying, I don't know if I finished saying it, that all of last week's giveaways were sent out, and then I think I'm just behind on this week's stuff that we've done so far. Um, so yeah, we're sort of caught up. So these winners will either go out today, if I have time, or Saturday, uh, not Saturday, Sunday. So if you don't get a shipping notification from me today, just know that'll probably ship Sunday, something like that. All right, let's go see who we can raid. Just got done handwriting a letter to a friend. It took an hour, my arm was tired, but it was fun. That's awesome. That is really, really good. So again, we'll be back here tomorrow, 10 a.m. again. Um, so any stationary brew, no stationary brews on anyone else? Who is this? Uh, 
Tokube Samore, Pixies Creations. Is Mike live? This looks like a neat stream. What is this? Hang on, I'm checking uh, checking things out over here. Oh, they just stepped away. Stationary enabler. Oh. Oh, oh my God, we're going, we're going in. This is gonna be amazing. Hang on, y'all are gonna like this. Oh, give me my, we gotta hurry though. We gotta hurry, we gotta hurry. Where's my, where's my panel? Y'all are gonna die. All right, let's go. We're just going. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. It's not the fishing stream. <laughs> this is gonna be worth it. All right, bye.